He with the most honey attracts the most bees. I fell in love the first time that I read the script. It was a character that I had to play. One of a kind, unique, original, someone who was full of life and dreams, someone who was passionate and empathetic and had a great heart. She was this shining light, this beacon of hope. To Lou. I'm Rayo. Congratulations. Fuck off and go back to your bed. Relax, I don't bite. I met Jared Ms. Rayon, so every day when I go to work and work with him, I was working with Rayon. Hey, hey, hey! Fucking Christ, you <laughs> fucking idiot! I've been looking for you, Lone Star. You know I could have killed you? Huh? I feel better. I wanted to thank you. Well, good for you now. Get the fuck out of my car. I need more of that cocktail shit you got. Mr. Tinkerbell, unless you got more cash or new clients, I'm busy. Let's fuck just out of my do car. this quickly so I can get the fuck out. You got enough for 20 of us? Yep. You know what? You don't deserve our money. Jared was Rayon 100% of the time. He was always Rayon, and it seemed like he had always been Rayon. You got your 20 in the trunk. Found me 20 more. Cut you in. 5%. Adios, cowboy. What's your problem? I can handle your insults, but 5%. All right, 10. 25, take it or leave it. He was so smart to find levity wherever he could. Where were you? Do you like this dress? Because I think the neckline's a little plunging. Rayon. The whole purpose of this study is to determine if ACT is helping people. Come on, Evie, you know there ain't no help in me. That doesn't mean I'm gonna stop trying. Rayon is a dreamer. She wants to be loved, wants to love, wants to live life every single second that she's alive. When I read this script, I, I fell in love with the idea of this character, someone who's gone through massive challenges and developed this sense of grace and levity, you know, a lot of things that I'd love to keep with me in my own life. There were a lot of physical things. There was the weight loss and the waxing of the body, uh, the voice, the dialect. You know, those physical challenges are really great because they affect you in a really significant way. You know, when you lose weight, it changes the way you walk and talk, the way you think, the way you feel, the way other people treat you. And in this case, I was playing someone who was not only addicted to drugs but dying of AIDS. So that weight loss has created a sense of fragility that was an absolute necessity. God, when I meet you, I'm gonna be pretty. If it's the last thing I do, I'll be a beautiful angel. I really appreciated how grounded he made the work because this role is something that anyone could have caricaturized or overdone or tried to do too much with. I met with transgendered people and, you know, they spoke open and freely about some of the challenging parts of their lives. And that was really wonderful to get to know people and to learn about a side of life that I hadn't known before. She looks great. I guess I didn't make the cut. You made that choice yourself. It wasn't a choice, Dad. Long time no see. I suppose I should thank you for wearing men's clothes, not embarrassing me. Are you ashamed of me because I hadn't realized that? <sighs> God help me. He is helping you. I have AIDS. I'm sorry, Dad. 
I met someone the other night, an 80-year-old woman, who said to me, you know, I don't know these kinds of people, but I'm really glad I do now. And, you know, she was talking about the rayons of the world. She was talking about gay and lesbian people. And I, I, I thought that, well, that's interesting. The power of film. Where'd you get this? Really? Where'd you get it? I sold my life insurance policy. Not like I'm gonna need it anyway. <laughs>